OK Google. So I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of this thermostat that I've built. I'll show you how it gets set up and all the features that it has. So when I power it on for the first time, it is using the Wi-Fi manager library. So that means I can use my cell phone to enter the Wi-Fi credentials. The first screen that you would see is it says connect to smart thermostat. Then as you can see in my Wi-Fi right here, there is smart thermostat. Then it will open up the Wi-Fi manager portal. I'll choose configure Wi-Fi. Then I'll choose my network. As you can see, the SSID automatically gets put in there. And then I'll put in the password real quick. And I will click save. We'll go back to the thermostat. And after a few seconds, it should connect. And it says connected. And then it goes to the main temperatures, it disconnects from my phone, and lets my phone reconnect back to the Wi-Fi that it was on. So here I am in the Blink widget that I've created, and right at the top I'm actually able to select which device I want to use. In this case, this is the one that I have set up in front of us right now. As you can see from the interface, we have temperature right in the middle and it has a circular graph that goes around from 60 to 80 degrees. On the left right here we just have a, another temperature display. We have a bar graph of the temperature with the temperature out to two decimal places. We have humidity over here in percent with a graph from 0 to 100 percent. We have altitude here. This happens to be in feet and we have pressure which is an ATM. At the midsection of the screen this is where we can adjust our temperature with these plus and minus buttons. It will also reflect the current set temperature right here and it will also update that on the screen. So if I go and increase the temperature you will see it in five seconds show up on the screen over here. And the reason it takes five seconds is because the screen only updates its temperatures and its graphics every five seconds to save power. Then right here we have these three LEDs, one for off, one for heating, and one for cooling. That's how we can tell what the thermostat is currently doing. If it's off, that means nothing's happening. Heating and cooling are both off. If this one's lit, then heating, and if this one's lit, then it's cooling. And then right here we can select which mode we want, if we want it to just be off, heat, or cool. So we can just go and tap and change those and once it goes through its 5 second cycle you'll see that LED changed to off or you can select heat or cool. Then at the very bottom of the screen we can select between manual temperature adjustment like this button does and schedule. If I put it on schedule you'll see the temperature go back to what I had it set to on this time period but if I go and change this it takes it off of schedule and puts it back on manual. Then at the top here I'll go to the schedule tab. In the schedule page we have what the set temperature is, the current temp again, and we have three different adjustable times and temperatures for morning, afternoon, and night. Each of the temperatures can be adjusted using their plus and minus buttons and the times, you can click on them and change what time you want each zone to start. As you can see, the time is 526, which is after the afternoon set time, but before the night time. So now it's running the afternoon schedule at 74 degrees. Next tab is the detailed tab. And this basically shows all the temperatures, pressures, altitude, and humidity in pretty much every units I could think of and has graphs of 
multiple things, which I'll explain in a second. For temperatures, we have Fahrenheit and Celsius. For pressures, we have ATM, PSI, millimeters of mercury, and kilopascal. And for altitude, we have feet and meters, and humidity is just percent. So there's only one thing. Then this graph here is graphing all the temperature, pressure, altitude, and humidity. Right now I have it set on two weeks, but you can choose uh, what time period you want. Like for example, if I were to choose live, it would show the live temperature updating. And I can choose various time periods to see the temperature changes and all the data changing over that period of time. Then this bottom graph here is the current temperature versus the set temperature. And I find that useful for seeing how long it will take for your air conditioning or heating system to actually heat or cool down to the set temperature. Obviously mine's not actually hooked up to any air conditioning or heating system yet, so these are pretty arbitrary. Finally, the last page is the settings page. At the top here, these two things don't actually really do anything. It's just set up for the real-time clock, which the Arduino will handle, and notifications, push notifications to the app itself from the Arduino. This adjustment value right here is the temperature above or below that it will heat to. For example, if your current temperature is 75 and you're trying to heat to 76, it'll turn off the heater at 76.5 degrees and it will turn it back on at 75.5 degrees. Otherwise, your heating and air conditioning systems will just be turning on and off if you set it to the exact temperature. Over here, we have a signal strength meter so we can tell the percentage of the signal strength from the router. This actually doesn't do anything yet, but it'll be pretty simple to implement. It's basically the update rate. Right now I have it set at five seconds, so it grabs a new temperature and sends it to the phone every five seconds. This button right here turns the OLED screen on and off. Generally I keep it off because OLEDs can sometimes get burned in if left on too long. And I also have a slider to adjust the brightness of the OLED screen. Now these three things right here are features that I'm going to be adding once I get the parts in the mail. The first one is a NeoPixel ring. I plan on putting a NeoPixel ring around the OLED screen and that'll allow me to do many different things. So what I want to do with the OLED ring can be chosen by this menu right here. And as you can see, I have quite a bit of stuff. So the first thing would be off. Obviously that means NeoPixel ring does nothing. The next could be a clock. It could, you know, go around in a circle using the, the LEDs around as like a clock. That'd be kind of cool. Uh, a countdown, that would be for when the next schedule time is. Let's say there's 30 minutes until it's going to switch to the afternoon temperature. And then it's got a ring counting down and decreasing the LEDs around in a circle of how much time is left. Temperature themed, if it's too hot out, it could turn red. And when it starts getting cold, it could turn blue. Solid color, that means you just choose whichever color you want and go with it. Wi-Fi signal strength. So it basically look exactly like this meter going around in a circle like that, but out of RGB LEDs. Nightlight, that means exactly what it sounds like. It would just turn all the LEDs to white and probably dim it quite a bit. So it would just act like a little nightlight. And then motion nightlight, the motion sensing I'll get to in a minute. And then of course, LED ring brightness is gonna be the brightness of that LED ring. Then for the motion sensing, I plan on putting a radar module in here. These radar modules cost about a dollar each. So if I have it on manual, then you can only control the OLED screen by turning it on like that manually with the manual button. On motion, it'll use the radar so that when someone walks by, that's when it will turn on the screen. And so motion nightlight would be, is when somebody walks by and it detects motion, it would turn all the, the NeoPixel LEDs to white and act as a nightlight only when somebody walks by. And then reset Wi-Fi, it just resets all the Wi-Fi credentials, so you would have to re-put in all your credentials for your Wi-Fi back how I showed in the beginning of the video. And as a side note with the Wi-Fi manager library, when you put in the credentials, you only have to do that once and it will save it. So if I restart this, it'll just try to connect to the same Wi-Fi as previously put in. And only if it fails, then it will bring up the Wi-Fi manager and ask you for new Wi-Fi credentials. So here is the screen that's going to be on the thermostat. It's a 0.96 inch OLED display. It's a dual color, meaning that the top first 15 pixels are yellow and all the rest are blue. And I like that better than a OLED with a single color because it, it shows some differentiation between what's in the status bar and what's an actual temperature and parameter of the actual thermostat itself. So as you can see in the top center, we have the current time. We have a little symbol 
that shows the Wi-Fi status. Right now it's at full because it's right next to the router. Then in the center, in the largest font, we have the current temperature. In the bottom corner here, we have the current mode. Right now it's set on cool. This is the set temperature, 74 degrees. And SCH stands for schedule because it's on schedule mode right now. And if I had that on manual, that would be that would say manual. So the OLED display here is fairly basic. There's nothing super fancy going on. It's just a another display to display the temperature, but the purpose of this project was mainly to view it on your phone. Another thing is this project saves all the modes to EEPROM. So if it loses power and when you power it back up, it'll know that you had it set to cool and set on schedule and what the set temperature and all that stuff was, it remembers it. But even if the thermostat were to lose its Wi-Fi connection, it would not rely on the app at all and it could maintain 100% of its function and still be a normal thermostat even if it loses Wi-Fi. And it also works with Google Home and Google Assistant. Hey Google, turn on Ethan's thermostat screen. Turning on Ethan's thermostat screen. Hey Google, turn off Ethan's thermostat screen. Okay Google, set Ethan's room to 75 degrees. Setting Ethan's thermostat to 75 degrees. Schedule mode off. Okay Google, turn Ethan's thermostat to schedule mode. Turning on schedule mode for Ethan's thermostat. So I'm going to keep developing this. I'm going to add the NeoPixel ring and the motion sensing. Hopefully I'll be able to 3D print some kind of enclosure for this and I will keep making videos about the progress of this and code in the future.